Hey, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studio for another exciting episode of Security Matters. Uh, today, Pete Odell is with us from Swan Island Networks. Um, some of you may have played with some uh, TX360, but we're going we're gonna to get into what situational awareness is all about, why it's important. And I hope you all had a great holiday weekend. I hope you didn't run into some situation where you wish you had more information about where you found yourself. Um, I hope everybody got through the weekend safely. Um, I just got back from Florida. It was pretty calm down there. I wasn't sure what to expect. I went down and spent some time with my grandkids, um, and I'm happy to be back back in the studio today. So, Pete, I really appreciate you jumping in here. I know the holidays just ended, uh, kind of hectic for us all, but thanks for joining us today. Oh, thank you. Happy to be back to work, actually. <laughs> right on. Well, um, uh, just for our audience who may not know you and know of your work, um, Pete's the CEO of Swan Island Networks. Um, he's got extensive history in and I'll let you get into. I'll let him talk about his history. But um, you'll, I think, uh, when we get through that, you'll understand why we've got him on here today and why he's a great uh, guy to lead this charge into situational awareness and uh, what he can do to help our communities. So, Pete, uh, with that, go ahead and give us um, give us your your bio. And um, I know we don't give it all away on social media these days. So, as much as you'd care to share, no, uh, appreciate no, it. No worries. I'm a uh, <laughs> I'm both a, a business and a tech guy. I've, I've written a couple books on cyber and uh, interoperable yep. data. So, and I've worked for a number of companies, big and small. Everybody from the being a veteran in the U.S. Army to uh, working for startups with uh, three people. And uh, and about 20 years ago, after 9/11, we decided to start Swan Island Networks. We're based in Portland, Oregon, although I'm in Washington D.C. Because for the first seven or eight years, we tried to help the federal government with some of the issues after 9-11, being information sharing, uh, situational awareness, real-time alerting, connecting the dots. And uh, we, we did a, a lot of work. We won a lot of awards. We won a few fed, little tiny federal contracts. But we ultimately, we could never help the federal government solve their problems. And you saw a lot of them reappear in the, in the Capitol insurrection on January 6th, unfortunately. So, so we moved back to the private sector. Um, I left the company. I stayed on the board of directors and then came back to the company as a CEO in 2000, uh, early 2017. And since then, we've uh, we've grown the company to about uh, 22 people. We've got a worldwide set of amazing customers that we don't talk about because because we, we help them keep things quiet. But uh, and we work with Allied Universal, which just became the largest security company in the world. They bought G4S. And now span 95 countries with 800,000 uh, employees, and so they they resell a version of our software branded as an Allied Universal product. That's awesome. I didn't I didn't even actually know that they were that you had like a reseller partner. So that's awesome too. Anyway, we can get these types of tools into people's hands. I think super important. Um, let's let's step back for for people who may not think about now. I don't know where our audience gets their information about what's happening. Um, I'm a pretty cynical critic of most information that comes my way. I uh, find it needs to be checked, checked, and rechecked many, many times. Um, and even the reason why the information was provided sometimes intended to drive uh, some sort of response or some sort of thinking um, to benefit someone, perhaps not me. Um, so when we talk about situational awareness, Pete, what's the one thing that, or the one glaring thing that you see for, let's talk about our, our North American friends, our community and security. What's the one real problem that, that you identified or that you guys have come across with situational awareness uh, for, for companies, for, you know, for their employees, for business owners, um, whether they're traveling or whether they're just sitting on, on the, the house on their front porch at home? Sure. So, so the problem... We we've seen this is you know when I was a kid the the issue of of uh, of not enough information was a big problem right I remember in 1963 I think it was reading about the Alaska earthquake that had happened and I was in New York State the Alaska was a life you know thousands of miles away but they had this huge earthquake that buckled roads and and you know today I could go to a website and I. A, 50 websites and read stories. Back then, we had one paper that came out, you know, once at once every couple of days and where we live. And you saw one picture of this earthquake and you had to imagine the rest of it. So today, what we find with our customers is they have this ocean of information. I mean, even calling it an ocean anymore is, is almost <laughs> too small, right? It's just this universe of information. You got video, you got social media, you got news, you got real-time alerts from the government. 
and it and it's coming at you 24 by 7. So it's these these mountains of information. And the reality of it is a tiny, tiny portion of it applies to your particular business. So if, if you're running a you know a mall in Dallas, you suddenly are like, well, I don't care that there was a shooting in New York. I'm sympathetic, but it doesn't affect me, right? What I want to know is what did my local police department put out on their Twitter feed? Do I have access to their 911 feed? You know, what am I seeing that might make me safer on the mall to protect fundamentally my, you know, my people, my property, my my reputation, and reputations can go down the toilet fast these days, and uh, and my continuity of operations. How do I stay in business? So those having being able to sort through that incredible array of information down to what you really need. Is, is what we see as the biggest problem. And it happens to also be the one, you know, we address as a company. Is, is it just the, is it like, do you think like human fallibility um, that, that maybe people would tend to rely on maybe like their Twitter feed, for example, some source of information that they identified with or identified the people with without really questioning the information that might show up there um, versus, you know, you've got a, uh, a curated uh, delivery system where yep. you've got analysts that are looking at this and, and aggregating and correlating and finding what's, you know, is it low, medium, or high? Like, what is the reality of the situation? Um, what, um, I guess, what do you think about the, the well, I know that the Zuckerbergs of the world and the, these social media platforms would say that their content is curated. Let's, let's, without being too overly critical, let's just talk about the, the level of curation that you're able to provide that brings real, you know, situational awareness from all of those information sources. And is sure. that, was that even possible without the power of the, the cloud and the way that you're able to aggregate all this data? Give us a sense of where that's, you know, ev- how that's evolved and, and, you know, what's possible compared to, you know, five years ago or 10 years ago. Well, it's, it, you know, it's, it's a lot better, but there's a lot more to process. So it's kind of a race every day. Mm. Let me, let me use Twitter as an example, because we, 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 you know, uh, Twitter has unfortunately become the world's, you know, primary real-time alerting network. So mm. if you, if you want to find out something that happened, you're probably going to see it on Twitter first, right? And and that's unfortunate, especially in the U.S. Our 911 systems ought to be, and I'm talking about businesses. Our 911 sure. systems ought to be able to send a business an alert that said, "Hey." There was a shooting two blocks away from your business. You might want to take protective measures by locking your front door, right? You've been here in sure. LA. There's a shooting. Lock your front door. Well, that doesn't happen, but you can find it on Twitter. The problem hmm. with Twitter is there are trusted sources on Twitter. So the you know New York Fire Department, you can probably take their Twitter feed to the bank, and if they say there's a fire on 26th in Lexington, there probably is, right? Whereas some other guy going, oh. You know, there, you know, there's a uh, except for very unfortunate situations like your little alert in Hawaii with the inbound nuclear uh, yeah. missiles. Right. So except for little things like that that happen once in a while through just unluckiness or a little bit of, you know, I made a mistake. Uh, you you got to verify the raw Twitter. Right. You got to look at the Twitter and go, oh, they say there was a fire. Well, let's let's go. You know, let's go check two or three news sources. Let's see if there are cameras in the local area. Let's try to find a way to verify that that information, or at least to the customer, call it out as this is this is an unsubstantiated uh, threat, right? Mm. You know, we'll, okay. we'll follow up and try to substantiate it, but you might want to know, right? And 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 that's going to get smarter and smarter over time. One of, one of the things we're looking at that we think is really important is intelligent video cameras. So today. For example, video cameras might take pictures in high definition. You got this great video, but but they're after the fact, right? It's like, oh, we had a shooting, and now we can look at the camera and see where we made all the mistakes because we streamed it into the video management system. The new generation of cameras are going to go, hey, that bad guy, the guy that you said you know threatened marketing last week, his license plate just pulled into the parking lot. So mm. heads up. We got. We might have a problem, right? And, sure. and the other camera goes, "Oh, look! He just got a long rifle out of his trunk. <laughs> That's yeah. probably another bad sign, right?" But he's still <laughs> in the parking lot. So suddenly, the situational awareness for the security people are such that it's like, "Well, 
you know, unfortunately for the people in the parking lot, we're at least going to lock the front doors, right? But you, you've got options and you've got extra time. And, and what we find is buying time for our customers, getting them more time to be proactive, it, it has a huge impact on whether they can prevent something or minimize the impact of something that happens to their uh, organization. Yeah, and I think that's so important. I, I first kind of came across this with sort of the ideas of duty of care that some of the larger enterprises were working on, specifically it was at Microsoft. And, you know, I think they had 5,000 people around the globe tra- in motion at any one moment or something. It was a baffling thing. I was like, wow, how do you alert? Because you don't want them flying, you know, they're sort of everywhere. You don't want them flying into uh, towns or cities or villages across the world that are having some eruption of a of a social problem or an earthquake or a, the town's on fire or whatever it may be. So um, that that idea really um, it brought it home to me how you know we could we could stay. They might have to turn around and get right on an airplane, or maybe they were going to get off the plane and drive south instead. They go north, whatever it may be. But the ability to get them something that was actionable quickly that was reliable, I thought that was so important. And and to your point, this this uh, the va- the validation of the information that we're bringing today is this a a trend? You know, let's just talk about machine learning and cameras as an example that you brought up. Are these? Let's just say I know that like Nest was feeding into police departments and things like that. And I don't know the, the all the you know back end of that. I've read about it, but are are do you think this is a a valuable resource like community um, communities of business owners whatever allowing their fees to be part of these tool sets that give us more information or give us a little bit of predictive analysis, even if there's a, you know, a mall owner up the street and uh, something's happened at the mall down the street, you know, to your point, the ability to lock down it and take some, take some proactive action away from predictive analysis. And, and how, how much of that's going on today um, in, in the, the world that you look at, you know, on the back end? We, we, we find there's lots of talk. It, it, it's tough to do, but, but for, <laughs> for, for, for businesses, you know, I, I I really understand you know how how you can do it right. And if you you have a, if you're like the Nike campus in Portland, you know you own that campus, you own the activities that go on there, and you're responsible, like you said, for a duty of care. So you know that that's the end. You've probably had most of your employees sign some kind of waiver that says, yeah, I know there's cameras and I know there's paper recognition, but I got an employee badge on and and it's okay, right? When you suddenly go. When you suddenly go, you know, to downtown Detroit or downtown LA and you start taking everybody's picture like you see in China and you're recognizing images and you're feeding it back and there's no, you know, surveillance reason, then it make that makes me a little nervous. And, sure. and I can understand why people people worry about it. But but when when it actually becomes an incident and you're able to proactively, you know, stop that. We, we had a customer ask us if we could predict uh, or see on New York City streets with a camera, if we could tell the difference between a mob and a tour group. And, mm. we think, you know, and it's like, it's, it's not just the person leading it with the umbrella, right? There's more to it. Same <laughs> with somebody giving somebody a hug versus somebody mugging somebody, right? It's pretty close. And, and so there's a lot of nuance. And, and, and the technology is way different than the policy. So I'm a technology guy. The policy is is much tougher to figure out. Awesome. I agree. Fascinating conversation. We are already at the one minute break. So stick around. We're with Pete O'Dell. We're talking situational awareness and we're going to get into the TX 362 in just a minute. So we'll see uh, uh, after we pay a couple of bills. Mitch Ewan, host of Hawaii, the state of clean energy on Think Tech Hawaii. Hawaii, the state of clean energy, is about following the many clean energy initiatives in Hawaii. Hawaii, the state of clean energy, appears weekly on Think Tech Hawaii at 4 p.m. on Wednesdays. Thank you so much for watching our show. We'll see you then. Aloha.
Aloha, and welcome back to Security Matters. We're with Pete O'Dell today, Swan Island Network, TX360. We're talking about something that's very near and dear to my heart, and the situational awareness idea. You know, we were good at it when I was in the Navy, Pete was in the Army, but the, a lot of people in the community go out there in the world, they walk around with their face buried in their phone, and they really don't know what's happening. They don't know what could be coming their way. They could walk right into a problem. Um, and so the situational awareness is critical, and business owners need to uh, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, train their employees about it, but also provide tools um, that can help them, especially if they're traveling, you know, globally, internationally, or even around the U.S. We saw an incident in, in D.C. back in January 6th that went from what looked like, uh, let's just say, a, a gathering, a political gathering. It became a insurrection. Um, that thing escalated very quickly and changed. And so if you had people there, maybe you didn't want them there. I mean, I hope you, you didn't want them there. Uh, Pete, let's talk about that that capability of of changing, of dynamically alerting, monitoring a situation. You know, because you've got probably literally tens of thousands of, of of inputs to your systems, right? That you're looking at, but then you you talk about that human element who can maybe take take a, a hug apart from a mug, right, or something yeah. like that. <laughs> so you know, these are important important distinctions to make. Um, so uh, what do we gain? I mean, I know we gain time, response time, but that ability to notify groups of people in an area that something has changed. Um, what do you think that that savings is, that net? Are we talking tens of minutes, 20 minutes? Uh, sometimes, you know, being able to get out of an area, you know, where it's going to become congested because everyone's fleeing, a few minutes could make a massive difference. So uh, give, us, give us some insight on that, that sort of that escalation, uh, the escalation capability of the tool and then how you've seen organizations use that sure. uh, to – to help their staff, you know, in the field or folks that are out working or traveling or, or don't know what's going on around them. Yeah. Well, like, like so many things, there's a continuum. So if you, if you think about an active shooter, you know, even five seconds becomes vital, right? Yeah. Um, it's like, man, I locked the door. I got under my desk. Those five seconds made a world of difference to me staying alive. Right. On the other hand, we, we were heavily involved with the aftermath of Superstorm Sandy and Superstorm uh, Sandy was a slow, we had, a, we had a, a network in New York called the Metropolitan Resilience Network with 400 companies sharing information. Superstorm Sandy was this slow rolling uh, emergency that came over the horizon, showed up, and then all kinds of things happened afterwards. So situational awareness, you know, before, during, and after was critical. And it was even mm. in, in the recovery phase was even more important because suddenly it's like, oh, where do I get gas? When are my lights going to come back on? How do I know, you know, how do I know, you know, what to do? Where can I find food? I mean, all kinds of, of issues. And then they also had problems, which is part of our modern day society, which is this idea of cascading failure. So it's mm. like, oh, I had this hospital and I knew I'd need backup power. So I put in a lot of generators. Well, I put the generators in the basement, which is where you think to put them. But then the storm surge showed up, flooded the basement. And now that my best of intentions for that backup power are gone because the salt water came in or the storm surge, salt water, whatever it did, came into the basement, the generators are out of power. So we you know we had one of our customers move their generators to the sixth floor because suddenly it's like, well, the water is going to get to them there. And so it, it's just, it, it depends on the emergency. You know, it depends on how many people you want to get in the loop. You know, you know, how do you, you know, how do you coordinate? And in today's world, we have a lot of customers where their, their response capability might be a thousand miles away. They have a chain of stores mm. across the country with a thousand stores in different parts of the country. They're being all being serviced out of Spokane, right? A command center in Spokane. You know, we don't have any customers in Spokane, but, but, um, but, but it's done from there. So they've got to suddenly be able to assemble across all those stores. They got to bring information in. They got to be able to figure out what to do, get it back out to their, to the people in the, uh, in the area where the event is happening. And, you know, last year when we had a lot of civil unrest, that was a huge issue. And so we were, you know, we were trying to identify protests ahead of time where, or gatherings ahead of time that might turn into protests and then update them as they, uh, you know, as they happen. So businesses could take, uh, you know, proactive measures to, uh, you know, either board up their stores or, or things like that. Yeah, it's amazing. So the the TX three sixty two. I know that recently. I want to let's make sure we plug this. I think you got a you set up a deal for InfraGuard National for our members of, of InfraGuard. Uh, I'm did. not sure if it was it was a beta test for a while or what the. Give us a little well, bit about that program. 
Sure. So, so we actually did a very large job. Uh, this is our TX Global product. And our TX, okay. we have two products. Our TX Global product is cost as low as $99 a month. So even a small business can afford it. Um, we, we took that product and we did a major, uh, a major uh, exercise with the inauguration where we had about 50 uh, DC-based businesses getting real-time alerts every day between the, the uh, capital insurrection and, the, uh, and after inauguration. And out of that came a, a relationship with InfraGuard where we sponsored their national congress. And then we give all InfraGuard members 50% off of, of either the single user uh, TX Global or the five user uh, Global, which is so the five user one is very capable. Five people can use it. It gives you global situational awareness. You can you can tune it so that instead of getting if you watched everything, it'd be like sitting in front of Netflix all day long, right? This is <laughs> you can you can tune it down to I don't want Asia, I don't want Australia, I do want Europe, I don't need Africa, I want cyber, I don't want. Um, active shooters you can tune the alerts that you get and then they'll show up in in your your in your uh you know email and text or you can go in and look at these very rich dashboards and uh so one example that you know for infraguard all the people in florida yesterday the big storm coming in from the caribbean was going to hit the keys and then it was going to peter out to a tropical storm and it was just going to rain well a couple hours ago all that changed is as it goes out into the Gulf, it's actually re-strengthening to at least a category one. So suddenly Tampa is not going to get hit with a bunch of rain. It's going to get hit with a category one hurricane. So big change in situational awareness, even a few, uh, in a few hours. I was happy to get out of there myself. I just left, just left like <laughs> yeah. 20 hours ago. Uh, but anyway, fire. yeah. So this, um, so we've got uh, these tools and we've got them deployed. I know I think you, you um, I'm getting the my alerts in particular via email. I think um, they probably could also come in via text. Um, the the urgency that they come in at um, does does it do you have a um, let's see how would I how would I frame this? Do you have a um, a mission? Let's say to get information out and just let's categorize it as low as possible. Let's get it out there and then if it you know. Then let's escalate it as needed. You know, first thing, hey, we got to let some people know, for example, yep. there's a storm coming. And then, you know, how bad is it going to be? And, and how quickly can we ascertain that, you know, to, to add that time savings that we've sort of been talking about? Is there a, is that driven by like sort of like an algorithm or like maybe let's say it could affect a population of 2,000 versus a population of 200,000? Yep. Um, what, what all goes into, I'm one of these guys, if we save one life, you know, we did our job. Um, so talk, talk to us a little bit about the yeah. sort of the back end of that and, you know, what, what goes on there. So, so we, we have it, we have an algorithm we, and we ingest about 12 million pieces of data a month right, <laughs> right now. So, we, you know, we look at 12 million things and we apply, you know, all the things we look at to about a hundred thousand customer assets. So customer wow. locations across the world on six, six continents. We don't have anything in Antarctica yet. We're still we're still working on whatever is uh, no malls, no, you know, no <laughs> companies, no manufacturing companies, but six continents. We've, we've got this incredible array of alerts and, but the algorithm, so the algorithm knows what to do, but then the customer has on their end, they have a way to tweak it and they can say, Oh, look for my, for my stores in New York city, I want a, you know, 50 foot radius around the store for my alerts downtown New York city. But for my one in Kansas, I, you know, I'm happy to have a two mile radius because, you know, it, it's not that dense and it's OK if I know, you know, something happened. Right. So we, we, we give we give the customer a, a set of uh, information and then they have a way to tune around, tune it uh, into their into their security personnel. And have you have you seen the guy who's too afraid? He doesn't want to miss anything. So he starts off too big you know, and then he's getting. He's just getting too much information. He's like, Pete, Pete, help me. So the, the tuning piece, I think, is critical. And that's where aligning it to your company policies, perhaps your insurance coverage, if you've got um, 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 some of these other types of insurance that allow you to cover tra people that are traveling in uh, a yeah. terrorist prone areas, things like that. So there's a lot of other other maybe factors that weigh in. Um, uh, do you, what's the sort of best practices you might give uh, some of our, our users, some of your users uh, to get started? Well, we, 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 give, we give people, we have that problem happen all the time. So what, what, the way our product works is, is we have what's called a smart alert queue where we give one or two people inside the company a wide aperture. So, you know, it's, it's one thing if, if, 
300 people in the company are looking at 500 alerts a day. That's really bad, right? It's a yeah. huge waste of effort, cost you a fortune. And the reality is if you don't have a system like ours, that's probably what's happening. Everybody's Googling stuff and they're doing it. And, you know, the ops department's doing it different than the sales guys. And so everybody's doing it. Um, we, we have what's called a smart alert queue where one or two people can look at a very wide aperture of what's happening and then they can selectively forward those alerts to the right people in the company so that you avoid everybody getting 200 alerts because it, it's a it's a big problem. But by the same token, you know, missing something important really is a problem for the security guys. It's like, oh, man, we we uh, we, were, we were doing a demo once, a live demo, and we had set up a feed. And and literally there was a shooting in one of the company's stores right there in a demo. And they're like, wow. is that real? <laughs> and we're wow. like, let's check. And it's like, oh yeah, it was. They're like, okay, wow. I think we want this system. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, uh, it. you know, you, you made a great point. Cause I know during January 6th, people in my office were on all different types of media talk, like work stopped. And they're just, everyone's re- self-reporting to each other what's going on. Yeah. We have, you know, customer concerns there as well. So, you know, it was just, um, it, it, to your point of having a, 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 a at least some authoritative guidance for what's important and why, and, and wh- where does it fit with the policy within the organization. Um, I hope some people are taking away some of the things that may be missing out of your own organization. You don't have to be a global enterprise to need this. You don't need to be a national enterprise. Small businesses should pay attention and take away kernels of this type of information because you really never know what's coming your way. And it's important to be alerted with an authoritative source like TX360 that's got a bunch of other uh, algorithms running, but also people doing that intelligence analysis and, and getting you information that should be important to you in your operations. And we've yeah. got, we're getting down, I'm yakking too much, Pete, but let's, um, we got a, a minute or so left. What's the, what's the one takeaway on situation now you'd share with our business community? Um, and then we'll, we'll check out after that. Sure. Well, it's important to look at tools. I mean, what one one you know hyperlocal problem that's happening right now is California is a tinderbox. So there's going to be a ton of fires, a bunch of people with with property and business at risk. So the important thing is is to pay attention. Whether you use our tool, whether you use somebody else's tool, it's like look, somebody's got to be standing guard because this business is important to you and your shareholders and your employees. So somebody's got to be watching. And when the way somebody can watch can vary and you can you can watch a little, you can watch a lot. But the key is somebody's got to be paying attention because the world is expanding so fast and the threats are showing up in so many different ways that you, you just got to got to be ready. And then once you're um, once you're ready, then you also have to be resilient. Right. Because bad things are going to happen. And now you got to know how to recover. You know, the cyber area is a perfect example. You're not going to fix the cyber problem because we've got 70 years of bad code that I helped create when I was younger and, <laughs> and all these other people. So you got 70 years of bad code. You can't, you yeah. can't patch that into it's impervious, right? So bad right. things are going to happen. You've got to be ready to recover. And that applies for physical security events as well. I love this because you're on the, the front end helping people be alert, but you're letting them know, hey, bad things happen to good people. So plan for that too. Uh, don't yeah. just act like it won't happen to you because everyone gets bit. Um, uh, I love that. That's great advice. Pete, I really appreciate you spending time with us today. Um, as these platforms evolve, I'm sure we'll get you back on to talk about, you know, what's the what's the growth of AI going to be in this market? And um, I, I, it's amazing what we're doing now to keep people safe. So thank you again for that. And uh, we will see you again soon, sir. Super. Great chatting with you. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Right. Aloha. Bye-bye.